And what I didn't realize is 42 is the meaning of life. So you right. start checking it out and um, it, it's, it's got the meaning of life on it. And now I don't care where I go. <laughs> 42, everything's everything. 42. Everything. Crazy. I mean, even Jackie down to Robinson, some of our friends. You know, great baseball yes. player, 42. There's, there's so many images of 42 that come to my mind that it just, it speaks of so much life. And, uh, or, or the event that could have taken you out. Yeah. Didn't. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis, as family is everybody's business. And today I'm in the podcast booth again with my wonderful wife, Mary, and we are going to discuss a uh, uh, a book mm-hmm. that is going to be coming up and released soon. Yes. It's um, entitled 42. How to Finish Well When You Thought You Were Finished. Mm. Author is... Uh, hold on now. Don't give it away yet. Don't give it away yet. You've got to have a build-up here, even okay. more than that. This has been uh, a book that we've been waiting to come out for many years yeah. to tell the story that needs to be told, that's going to help a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I personally feel like it has helped birth this podcast as well, just mm. the stories of of getting through life and mm-hmm. when life hits you hard. And so it's extremely exciting that this book is coming out. Cannot wait to read it from mm. cover to cover mm. because it is your book yep. on your experience with a massive heart attack that should have mm-hmm. taken your life, not could have, should have yep. taken your life, and the miracle that you are today. And people need to read it because it is it is powerful, it is heartfelt, They'll laugh and they'll cry. They'll mostly cry. Mm-hmm. But I, I am so proud of you for writing this book. So mm-hmm. this is exciting to finally be here, finally yeah. to be here, because as much of a perfectionist as you are, this book will be perfect um, and exactly what I think our listeners and our church family need to read, because yeah. um, it's your story, it's our story, Yes, but it is, it's also a story of, of overcoming something that really you should have succumbed to. Yeah. But you didn't. Nope. Nope. And more and more and more. Just thank God for it. Now, it is uh, it is the story of the heart attack. Mm-hmm. You and I are both co-writing this book with yeah. a friend of mine that's helping us do it because this is 15 years ago that the event happened. Yeah. Uh, the book, by the way, will be released at three different points this year. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about it. One will be right around... April, we'll release the paperback edition. Over the summer, we'll release the audio book, and uh, hopefully I can knock that out, reading it through. That'll be cool. That'll be fun. And then we're going to have a special holiday version in hardcover. Wow. So that'll be cool as well. And that's for somebody that may want to give it as a gift sure. to people who are going through some challenges of life. The The whole 42 theme, um, it comes down to... That Monday night, Mm. it was June, right around the 17th. The day after Father's Day. The day after Father's Day in 2007. So it's 15 years ago, which will hit why it's taken so long to even write this book in a little bit. But uh, that night, I felt a a pain in my left shoulder that then, after I felt nauseated, that I, I didn't think it was anything because I was, we were moving into our new condo that we had bought in Stewart, right. two hours north of Miami on the East Coast. And as we were, it was raining outside and the movers, we were waiting for the movers. Our kids, think about it, 15 years ago, Chris is 30, so he would have been right around 15 at that time, 16. And um, Our youngest was seven. Our youngest was seven. Two in and between. They were next door in yeah. the condo that my parents had. Right. And uh, I was moving some furniture and moving, actually sliding doors. I took them off the slider because I was putting down some wood on the floor. We were extending that patio to make it part of the living space. And I felt this pain hit my left shoulder. And I thought I strained something. And then a few minutes later, I said to you, Mary, I got to go to the bathroom. Mm. And I went next door because our bathroom wasn't even ready yet in that condo. And after I relieved myself... Um, which they tell you is your body's way yes. 
of emptying Dumping everything. Everything so the blood is not focused right. on digestion. Yes. It's trying to get to the heart. Everything to the heart. As soon as I looked at myself in the mirror in that little bathroom, the pain moved from my shoulder mm -hmm. to the middle of my chest. And I remember those words, oh Lord. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not now. And um this is one of the reasons. Yeah. It's taken 15 years to write this thing because every time I start to address it, <laughs> this happens. Yeah. It happens to both of us. So yeah. that ended up um, turning into as I went next door and I said to you, Mary, call 911. You're like, what? First time we ever had to do that. Yeah. I was 46 Six, at the time. Yeah. Not turned 47 yet. And you're like, what? And I said, yeah, something's wrong. And I start, started to take off my shirt because I knew these guys were going to have to get there and do some work on me. And I didn't want them ripping my shirt off, yeah. <laughs> busting my buttons, <laughs> took off my watch and my jewelry and took off my glasses. And I can hear the sirens going off as yeah. it was happening. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I, I hope they don't get lost. I hope they can find me because they yeah. were... I heard the sirens and I didn't hear the sirens and I thought they made a wrong turn. Mm. And then uh, next thing you know, these men come walking through the front door and they were carrying all of their luggage, their their All the equipment, equipment, huge equipment. Yeah. And there was about four or five of them come through yeah. that door. And as they came over to me, they said, hey, what's going on? And the first thing they seemed to ask me was, did you take any Viagra? <laughs> Which I was, you know, felt Offended free. by. No, I was pretty proud to say no. <laughs> and then when I did, that's all I remember, yeah. except a few times where I tried to uh, come to and talk to them. And then I felt them pop me real hard when they came crashing down on my chest and uh, hit me seven times with the paddles. Which they don't usually more than four times. Wow. And they were determined yeah. to give it their all. Something else that's really uh, amazing about the story you don't remember a lot of it. You remember the, the most important parts, obviously. But in that 42 moments, which is the, what the book is entitled, 42, we know that's the number of life. 42 represents life. That it was life or death. I did not know that it was more death than life in that moment. And my recollection and my memories are very vivid. And I just thought to myself, there's no way they can keep hitting him. They're going to crush his chest, his rib cage. I mean, he's just going to be a pancake. How in the world can they keep hitting him? And that was the reason that I knew um, that it was it was more death than it was life. Yeah. And uh, so, it, it, you know, 15 years later, it doesn't ever go away. And writing the book obviously brings us back to the the feeling and the emotion of it all. Right. But I think our tears. We cry so much now, even more than we did then. Gosh. It's just the overwhelming sense of you shouldn't be here and the gratitude that you are. Yeah. And the I, I think it's taken all these years for the ginormity of that event right. to really hit us both. Because you're in shock for a long time. We both were. Our whole family was, our church was. But what I what I'm grateful about in the book is that you get into all those details mm -hmm. every minute. You're, you take the reader through the experience in a way that they won't ever forget it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's it's a compelling, compelling story of tasting death. Yeah. So so the 42 came from because uh, the theme or the, the, the even title came from the next day when the paramedics showed up at the hospital. Yeah. And they came to see me, which, gosh, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, they came to see me, and so they uh, they were, I was just, of course, confused, not sure what the heck was happening. Yeah. But the guy said to me, you know, man, we worked on you for 42 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. And I didn't realize what that would sure. you know, symbolize. But 42 minutes yeah. was a long time. Right. The way they hit work to keep me alive, again, seven times with the paddles. <laughs> So 42 became the whole theme of the book. And what I didn't realize is 42 is the meaning of life. So you right. start checking it out and um, 
it, it's it's got the meaning of life on it. And now I don't care where I go. <laughs> 42, everything's everything. 42. Everything. Crazy. I mean, even Jackie down to Robinson, some of our friends. You know, great baseball yes. player, 42. There's there's so many images of 42 that come to my mind that it just it speaks of so much life. and uh, or, or the event that could have taken you out. Yeah, didn't. which is yeah. the tagline right. to how to finish well when you thought you were finished. Yeah. Because the follow-up, now the event, a heart attack in itself, is a terrible thing. Yeah. Um, but the feelings that come after it, yes, confusion, you know, what's this God? What happened? I wasn't doing anything bad. I wasn't rough on my family. I wasn't abusive. Uh, I was good in my church. I, I wasn't immoral. I wasn't doing anything wrong. What, what's all that about? You know, yeah. which, uh, so it's filled with confusion right afterwards. And we were gone about three months from work here at the church, great church staff members, church staff, family, uh, the way they all stepped in, friends, um, our pastors came in to help write the ship of the the church. So much happened uh, immediately after all of that. That you know, it 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 helped not realizing you know those feelings of frailty and confusion would yeah. some some with some time would give away because right. I felt old sure. at forty six. <laughs> I immediately felt old. Yeah, I was worried yeah. about what you know, what kind of future I'd have physically speaking. Because my heart, what they call the ejection fraction of your heart, as soon as I went to my cardiologist back here in Miami, I was in the twenties and thirties, which yeah. is pacemaker stuff. Right. You got to be at the fifties and the sixties healthy to heart. Be healthy. Yeah. What happens is your heart takes in blood, but then it pumps out blood, and when it pumps out blood, it doesn't always leave. Right. It. I mean, it has to leave blood in the heart keep the heart pumping. So it only pump, pumps out 50 to 60% of the blood that's in your heart. Right. Well, when all of a sudden you're not pumping out as much as you're bringing in, yes. your heart starts to wear and tear, yeah. can it get fatty, it can get enlarged, It can it's premature death. So then they end up putting a heart um, pacemaker there and they were going to, I had to go in and get checked because my ejection fraction was so low. Had to get ch- checked for a pacemaker. I remember that feeling so old. So there was a lot of confusion on the front side of the heart attack or on the back side immediately that uh, I it made you think or made me think I was finished. Yeah. My life's done. Yeah. You know, my marriage, you know, what, what, what kind of c- contributing husband will I be? What would my sex life be like, right. with, like with my wife? What, what, what kind of, contribution will I be make, making around the home? What about my church? How will I ever preach again? I could hardly preach to myself to get motivated. Yeah. How will I get up and preach faith to our yeah. church? And we were in the middle of a building program. Yeah. We we just moved into a new building and we were retrofitting the, the facility for our church. All of that created this chaos and confusion and what the heck's going on, God? Where are you? Yeah. And then when I first went to church up in Port St. Lucie, just north of a buddy of mine's church. I walked in and I got mad. Yeah. Because the preacher's up there overweight, not yeah. my buddy. He had a guest, overweight. Yeah. Uh, his he and he's preaching about going to the next level. And I'm like, I can see ketchup stains on your <laughs> tie, man. What are you doing? You yeah. talk about going to another level. How about you go to another level in your health? Yeah. Why am I over here suffering? I had a hard time with yeah. with some aspects of God right after all of that. So the whole theme of finishing well when you thought you were finished, it's looking back after 15 years later to what we have now. Yes. And seeing what we've done with our family. Uh, seeing what we've done with our church. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's That's the pretty stuff that gets me emotional because I, I think, man, I could have missed all this. I know. I know. And that's that's why, why does it take so long to write a book? And my church family and friends, they hear about this over and over again from me. It's because that that really impacted uh, my life and still does to this day, because I think 95% of its victims, Mary, yeah. of a heart, Widowmaker heart attack don't survive. Right. And I joke saying, well, it's the first time in my life I've ever been in the top percentile of anything. (laughs) Yeah. But it takes them. And then we learned that of those 5% that didn't get to the hospital. Yes. 
Only, only a small percentage survive. Yeah, I think survive. it's one percent survive. Walk out. Mm-hmm. The rest succumb. Or get to the next point where there's a stent and you're saved. Yeah. And so we didn't know any of that, gratefully so. We didn't know. We were ignorance is definitely bliss. Um, you know, I, I what I love about the tagline is, you know, when you thought you were finished, maybe for us it was your heart attack. And for other readers, it's going to be their divorce. Yeah. It's going to be financial calamity. A, a child that's gone wayward. You know, we've gotten we've we've got a family in our church that lost a son. Um, people that have lost loved ones, and you think life is over. It's absolutely over. And when when you had that heart attack, even though life wasn't over, we still had to process emotionally and psychologically the reality of we came really close. So one of the things that that uh, we heard in counseling going through it afterwards was that maybe we didn't have to go through death, but we still had to process everything. Our bodies, our minds, our hearts had to process the fact that we almost did and that it is, there's, there's no closure in it because it can take you back. But something that we, we did do, and I think the book reflects, mm-hmm. is finishing strong, moving on from that rallying as quickly as you can. You you took you had to take some time. We all did to really process through that season of pain. Yeah. And why me? I remember you feeling like your body betrayed you. Yeah. I, yeah. I can remember that thought. That had never occurred to me at that time in my life that you would ever feel that way. We take our bodies for granted. Right. You know, you picked up those big glass doors like nothing, like mm-hmm. you would have when you were 18 and moved it around. And, you know, you weren't thinking you were old. You weren't thinking you were overweight or or out of shape. You weren't thinking that that something you had done would cause a heart attack. That's not how we think when we're younger. You know, we're not we're not even counting that cost. So there was so many processes of emotion that we both had to process, and right. you especially. Hmm. But um, I think the book is a good resource right. for everybody that has gone through a situation in their life that should have finished yeah. them. Yep. And here's how to handle things when you feel that way, but you're still here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the target. Yeah. It's not just my story. It, it's supposed to now. How do I how do I help you get through your own forty two? Yeah. And there is a way to get through the forty two. There is. And uh, there's a right way and the wrong way, and you you're going to have to figure out what that looks like. And I and I hope the book will be able to bring some some uh, open doors to that, but. You know, the whole thing about forgetting and forgetting, forgetting um, that precious person who lost their child, there's no way you can say to them, just get over it. No. no. I didn't lose a child. Right. I had a physical event. And to this day, 15 years later, I bring it up and it's talk about painful. it. It's still painful. Yes. These yes. specific issues. And yes. I can't help but still get emotional about it, which one of the reasons why... Um, I wanted to discuss this today was because uh, I was reminded, I was talking to the uh, my buddy who's helping me write it, Jordan, uh, yesterday, and we're going over acknowledgments. And he said, you know, Steve, it'd be good to get the the paramedics just getting their names and um, hearing from them. And so I reached out. I have four of them in my cell phone. And every year I try to go back to the fire station that that did the work on me where these guys were at. But the interesting thing was on that night, uh, this was the first time all four of those paramedics worked together. Yes. They all had different stations. They were from different stations. But because it was the day after Father's Day, they were called in. And um, so there was the first night they were working together. The guy that drove the emergency truck was not a driver of trucks. He was a helicopter pilot. But that night he happened to be working at that station right there. He's the one that stayed in touch with me over the years. Rich Hunter is his name. And um, so I knew he'd immediately respond. I, I, I knew that. I didn't know about the other guys. But I try to stop by. Every time I do, the guys are like, oh, yeah, we've heard your story. You know, they don't know who I am, like the, fir- the first five that were there. But I reached out to them and... Um, well, hold on a second. They've heard your story. Yeah, they did. For a reason. Well... <laughs> Yeah, here's here here's why. First off, this guy Rich Hunter, when I reached out to him, um, 
He replies, and it's really cool, his reply, which I'm going to cry, okay? Well, we he got said, tissues coming. We got yeah. tissues coming. Thank you. I'm going <laughs> to take several AP. there. Thank you, Alan. He says, uh, Steve, <laughs> really so good to hear from you. Stuff. I retired from fire rescue in 2011. I moved Nashville now, 10 years, settled in South Alabama. You named everyone on the crew with one exception. His name is Randy Spiger Halter. He was the EMS supervisor I called to the scene to administer a new medicine, medication for your recitation. He should be named as the minute we pushed that med through IV and shocked you one more time, mm. it fixed you and stabilized you. Reading that last part, pushing that med through the IV and shocked you one more time, it just tore me up. Yeah. Because I'm like, what did that mean? Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. Was that the last chance? One more time? Was mm -hmm. this their ditch, last ditch effort? Was this the Hail Mary? Whatever that was, Mary, it just, as I read that, it reminded me of how close uh, we were to our lives being yeah. so different. Oh, yeah. But thankfully, that's not the case. Thankfully, it's not the case. No, so. I mean, yeah, that was a, a rough text to read when he sent that because there's a your brain has a has a tendency to want to move away from those dark rooms and not be reminded of what that felt like. So when you have witnesses and uh, people that were eyewitnesses <laughs> to the darkest day of your life that yeah. were there trying, they were in on it trying to save your life. Yep. They don't forget it. You don't forget it. Yep. And it's a very powerful, powerful experience to have with those guys. My personality, I, I know it's funny, you're so different than me, but I, I it's like I don't even want to talk to them. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, I know, I know. but it takes me back to a place I don't necessarily want to go to because I know what it took to overcome emotionally, but it's good to revisit because what you see is the grace of God, the fact that you're alive and you shouldn't be, and that there were people in that room that day that made a decision for is too many to mm -hmm. defibrillate you, but let's keep trying. Yeah. And for them to make that decision to say, okay, one more time and call in the last paramedic to bring a new drug in to resuscitate you and hit you again the seventh time with that drug. You know, I'm over in the kitchen in this moment and I'm walking in circles and I'm calling a family member. I called my twin sister and she's praying and I'm calling different ones. And I knew the minute the paramedic said to us, call everybody. Why? Well, because you yelled out, which was the only thing you said through the whole 42 minutes, don't call my dad. And your mom was going through cancer at the time, and your dad was taking care of her. And so you didn't want to scare them. And you said, don't call my dad. And the paramedic shushed you and said, no, Steve. And he turned to me and he said, call everybody. And I thought, okay, I'm going to call everybody. And I did. I got on the phone and I started calling everybody. And I don't know, you know, I, I talk a lot about the anchoring in my relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know what I would have done without that. The kids were right next door. And I know we'll, we'll keep telling my side of the story, not today, but right. I can tell you that um, hearing that text read of the one more time, uh, I, I am so grateful. Yeah. I am so grateful for guys that walked in that room, the right men yeah. that saved you, um, that were willing to say, we've already gone too far, but we were here in this room when he had the heart attack. We've we, They'd lost somebody that- That, that was their that deal. That same day, they'd lost somebody in else. The morning, they thought, um, we're not going to lose another one. And they one. said, we can't lose another one. And then they heard you pray, and they're like, well, this guy must be <laughs> something. They heard me praying in the kitchen. And- they said, we're going to do everything we can. Yeah. I mean, we'll kill him trying. And I, I'll be honest with you. There were times where I thought, they're going to kill him. Yeah. I mean, forget his heart. They're crushing yeah. his chest. But um, what, what a testimony from the perspective of 
literally being in the bowels of death. Yeah. I mean, that's where we were in, in the bowels because death is never beautiful. It, it's, there's nothing about it unless you're 101 and you're ready to go. Death is hard. Mm-hmm. And to taste it and to be acquainted with it um, was way more than I ever. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to, to conceive of it. There's mm-hmm. just no way. Yeah. And to come back from that is a very high pitch to climb. Yeah. It's a very high pitch to climb. Um, but I know this book. Yeah. I, I've read it. I've lived it. I've helped write it. You sure have. It's going to help a lot of people know what to do after these experiences. Yeah. And uh, you you write the forward on it, and your forward has to do with something called survivor's guilt. Yeah. And we'll hit that yeah. as well on our podcast in the future. But here's Thomas Conti. He was the other paramedic. He says, man, so great to hear from you 15 years later, okay? Wow. He says, I remember it like yesterday <laughs> and use the scenario for training new medics. Amazing. So glad you're doing well. Amazing. Can't wait for the book. Amazing. Crazy. And 15 years later... It's because not sure if they've saved anybody since, but we know statistically yep. if they did, it's maybe one or two more people. Yep. Um, Actually, him and Rich are out of. They out all of retired. The, they all retired. He's yeah. in Thomas is in hospital work now. Rich, uh, he's uh, uh, I can't remember what he said, but he's he retired from. It's a tough paramedics. Job. It is. It's a tough job, but we are so grateful for those guys. And I have to just throw this one story in because it ties into the survivor's guilt. But it's a scenario of of the reality of the event. When we were um, waiting for the paramedics to hopefully be able to move you because they can't move you until your heart is in rhythm, until you're resuscitated. Because if they did, they could, your heart could stop. There's no way to get it started again. And then they would flatline. You'd be flatlined. So I didn't know any of that. But I, when they went to, finally they got your heart in rhythm. And 42 minutes literally felt like 42 hours. Yeah. Um, I just kept thinking, this is too long. This is taking way too long. What is going on? Um, I remember the movers were down there just looking at us because they had to come up two flights of stairs and it's raining and they're just looking at us like, what's going on? And I happened to look across and on a balcony of another condo was a young lady standing there and she's pretty far away and she just, this is in the book, but she's staring at me. And I remember thinking to myself, do not come over here. Do not come over here. I don't want to talk to you. I didn't know who she was. I didn't even really see her face. I just remember having that thought. Found out later when we were through the hospital experience and back at that condo because they said, can you go somewhere and convalesce and just rest for about six weeks? We Um, were in the pool. And we were in the pool swimming. And we're just still hanging on. Trying to get back to some semblance of normal. Just eating blueberries and salmon and spinach. (laughs) Just seriously, everything that was on that heart diet we were trying to do and- and um, this girl gets in the pool with us, and she starts to question us if what happened, that she'd seen us that night. I immediately knew who she was. And when she told us her scenario of three years earlier, she lost her brother, and he was the same age. Oldest son was 15, three daughters. S- the scenario was almost identical to you and how he did not live, um, and you did. And I, it just set me on this course of, I, I, my brain exploded because how, what do you do with all that? Yeah. You know, that's a hard process. Why you and why not her brother? And we can, you know, she blamed paramedics that didn't know what they were doing. She blamed paramedics that weren't big enough, weren't strong enough. And I just, we just sat there. She even blamed one for not being the right gender. She sure did because her brother was such a large (sighs) person that if it had been, if it had been a male they could have saved him. And, and I just remember sitting there thinking, I can't, this is not a victory story for me to tell. No. Well, we weren't ready for it to be victory. Because in the process of coming out of that moment and that event that almost took your life or took your your marriage or your finances, it takes a while to even be able to get your equilibrium back, to to tell the story. And then you're you're met with someone who their story did not end as well as no, yours did. No. And it's another spiral of of just confusion. Babe, you can go through hard times. You can go through divorce. You can go through financial ruin. You can go through physical challenges such as this and accidents. But you can 
get on the other side of it. Yes, you can. It's going to take some time. Yes. But you can get on the other side and finish well. And the picture, perfect picture, speaking about that lady, was during COVID. Yeah. We were all up there. She's still there. (laughs) Okay. And we're underneath this area. And my mom and dad are there and my sister and her husband and family members. And we're out there with our kids. And all of a sudden, this couple comes over. And I'm thinking to myself, that lady looks familiar, but I'm not stirring up conversation or anything. I'm just kind of like, we're all in COVID fear, right? Yeah. Keep your distance. And she comes over and she starts talking. And then she says to us, hey, aren't you the couple? Yeah. And she points at me and says, didn't you have the heart attack? And all of it just came back like that. She's the lady you were just talking about. She was there. And here she came down that day without her brother. Yeah. And... Yeah. what that all looked like for her family, and they yes. have rebounded. But here we are sitting there with my family, mm. and um, it was just a beautiful picture of just God's hand of yes. protection and mercy and grace that when you go through something where you really felt like you're finished, you're done, man. Just hanging in there and keep fighting and keeping God on the, in the mix, uh, you can finish well. You so. Can. I, I look forward to finishing this book and finally get, <laughs> getting it out. Oh, it's going to be amazing. In uh, April, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about this. So thank you for joining us today on the Family Business Podcast with Steve and Mary Alessi as we talked about 42, book coming out in April. Thank you. Hey there, if you enjoyed this episode of the Family Business Podcast with the Alessis, then you'll want to know we've got more insight, more encouragement, more great conversations that we can have on Sundays, and even some surprises coming your way. So you want to make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch one of these next videos here next, because remember, family is everybody's business.